Hi, in this video we're going to talk about REST APIs because we are about to start a project where we're actually going to program one. So this is an introduction to the concepts that are behind what a REST API is and what its purpose is. So first of all, REST has nothing to do with RESTing. It's a acronym that stands for Representational Straight State Transfer. So REST are just letters that re represent a type of data format and communication in servers. And so here's what they look like. So if you've ever seen a, a segment of J JSON code here on any kind of an application, you're probably seeing the result of a REST API. So a server that is set up as a REST API server is probably not going to produce web pages as a result to the clients. Instead, it's going to provide this text. And this text here has a special format. So JSON is not the name of a person either. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a way to represent objects. And as you can see here, we have an object for a product. It has an ID number, a name, a price, and a description. And so this particular REST server is providing a list of projects or products. And you can see that there's only one item in the results. So the search results for this thing was for looking for tacos. And we found one taco in our database. Now, we can also use a program called Postman. And Postman is a very common tool. If you haven't used it before, you should. As a matter of fact, if you haven't programmed anything that has a REST API client or server, then you're missing something in your resume. So REST is super common. Uh, Postman, anyway, is what we have on the screen. And this tool is used to test out the program. Uh, you can get information from a REST server. You can delete information, you can post new information, or what's called put and update information. So all the, all the objects in, an, in a database can have the four different uh, actions. So CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. And so that's what Postman's job is. It's like a web browser for a, um, a REST API service. So why would we want to do this? What's the point of serving JSON data instead of a web page? So the, the server is really not much different than what you're used to seeing if you're a web developer. It, it produces a response to any client. The difference is that when the client asks for information, the data is not sent in HTML format. It's sent in this JSON format. So here again, we see the same example. The taco search resulted in one list. Now, what's the client supposed to do with it? Obviously, you don't just show that to the user in this format. No, the idea is that the client now is responsible to parse this information and display it in the appropriate values, in the appropriate format. So you've probably looked at any kind of a, an application that has three different formats. First of all, you would have the desktop or the laptop version that shows um, a pretty big web page. And then the clients could also be in a desktop or a tablet or a mobile or even a watch or maybe another server. And so the advantage of JSON data is that it is one source of data that the client can interpret in the way that it feels that is necessary. So the job for the client then in this REST API is to take a list of data in this JSON format and then render it to the appropriate screen. So in a web page, you're going to render it into HTML. If you're a client that is a um, phone, for example, you'll probably render it in the appropriate uh, application uh, objects, such as, uh, such as an Android or iOS. You're going to have things like lists and uh, text fields. And you could even have a, a desktop client like in WinForms, where you have you know, not a web browser at all. But the client is responsible to take that data and display it in, in the way that the user can see it. So clients are frequently written in JavaScript. And so in the early days, you might say, from about 2008 to, let's say, 2018, jQuery was a very common way to take a list of data and interpret it and put it in a web page. So it's not dead, but jQuery has certainly lost its appeal. It's been replaced by three main libraries that you should probably also learn if you're a web developer and you haven't seen before. So React, Angular, and Vue all pretty much serve the same purpose. Rendering web pages using JavaScript, and they consume this JSON data. And so it was about 2016 when 
uh, Angular and React first of all became popular and then Vue has come of age maybe a little bit later. So I believe React is a product of Facebook and Angular is from Google and Vue is an open source project that doesn't have a corporate sponsor. But all three do good jobs at uh, what they're designed for. So take a look at this uh, graph from queries from Stack Overflow. So this gives us an idea of the attention that each of these frameworks is getting to software developers. So you can see the big hill is the jQuery curve. And so you can see that it just took off like a rocket in 2009, 10, 11. And it's remained popular up until now, which this is 2021 when I'm making this video. So it's not dead, but it has certainly been eclipsed by the other three. And so React, according to this graph, is the leader now in what people are using when they are rendering JSON data. So React is important because you can uh, use it in a web page. You can use React Native to build mobile apps. And so it's certainly a big deal when you look for the job search uh, requests in Indeed or Glassdoor or wherever you get your job postings. React Native and React are really popular. And you can see that uh, Angular was the early leader but has now since kind of leveled off as well. But the important thing is to know that when you have a REST API, you're going to have to have one of these kinds of languages or frameworks to be able to interpret the data and render it to the screen properly. So now we're going to uh, transition into a project here where we're going to take an existing website that produces uh, a list of products and displays them nicely in a web page. And we're going to turn it into just the back end server where it produces JSON data. And so it's not a huge leap from a regular web app to a JSON producing a REST API. And so stick with me and we'll do that in the next video.